it's one of the questions that we've been looking at. And, and John, I want to ask you, just generally speaking, okay, I've been very hard on uh, DeAndre Hunter. Um, I've said for probably the last two years, he's just not lived up to my expectations. I think Hawks fans' expectations. When you needed him the most, more times than not, he doesn't show up. And when you least expect him to show up, he shows up for a game, and you go, man, this guy's great. And then you go, well, why doesn't he do that all the time? We had a conversation yesterday with Brian Geltziler. He does a show on Sirius XM, big, big basketball guy. And I want you to hear what he said about DeAndre Hunter. Now, for me, you guys know this. If they moved on from DeAndre Hunter, I had no issues with it whatsoever. I think you've got to retool. But Brian Geltziler said, not so fast. Well, all right, so here's the issue with DeAndre Hunter. And I like the player. And I don't think the contract's bad, but I'm in a minority around the NBA. People don't like the contract at all. Really? And that's an issue. You know, four-year $90 million extension they signed him to. So I, I think they don't have a choice but to bring him back and give him a chance. Connor's a little bit of a different ball game. He's a couple of years into that deal. Um, he didn't have a great year this year. I think he'd fit better in another place. But you also got to see what kind of value you're going to generate for him. So he says the contract's not a problem. Where are you at on this? How do you retool? Well, I, retool is probably the wrong word, uh, only because to retool you would have had to have tooled in the first place, which they haven't done. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, anybody not named Trey Young can go. All right? That's it. That's it. All right? That's the answer. All right, so I, I don't know what to tell you. I could break it down, but anybody not named Trey Young. Now, I have kind of started to change one opinion I had. DeJounte Murray is on the last year of his contract coming up, and I thought, you got to you gotta trade DeJounte. And the reason this was my first thought, the reason you have to trade DeJounte is because you're not going to be able to sign him at the end of next year because you cannot have those two contracts you know, in your backcourt. You just can't. I had two max deals from those guys would wipe you out. Uh, you'd become the Washington Wizards with Beal and Wall. And so you can't do it. I said, all right, so you got you got to trade DeJounte because he's the carrot, and you throw the stick in, that's Hunter or Collins, and you make a massive trade for a star to come back in here, a front court guy. All right, so that's what my – and then I thought, well, you know what? Who, what like, if, like Rudy Gobert, somebody like yeah, that? Yeah, somebody like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just pick a name. All okay, right. that's all fine. Right. You know, uh, so that, that's one way to do it, and they may do that, or they may say, because let's be, let's be clear here, Quinn Snyder's going to make the call. This is no longer a – it's not a Kyle Korver call. I don't think it's a Landry Fields call. Mm. I think this is all Quinn Snyder. And Quinn may look at it and say, I think I can get these two guys to play together. And if you want to take a one-year run at it and make a trade and trade, you know, even if it means getting rid of anybody else not named Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, then you do so. If you can match contracts, you can take expiring contracts off hands, right? Take a couple of veterans who are on expiring contracts – you know, you know, you're going to make what one one year run at this, and, and I think that's maybe what he's thinking. Is that, and it may, it may mean he has to trade to John Murray to do it, and if he does, he does. But I think that they are looking at next year as a chance and an opportunity to reimage the team, not for the long term, but for one season, and get a bunch of expiring contracts, and then in the following year, we'll worry about the following year, the following year. Let's see if we can make a run at this by going after guys who are veteran players, maybe older players, who still have game, and see if we can't make something special happen. That's what I think might take place. Well, let me ask you, who's the best backcourt in the NBA? And do they look like this? Meaning, I don't care who you think it is, right? When, when Durant got traded, some people say it's CP3, even though he's aging, and it's Booker. Obviously, it's the Celtics with Brown and Tatum, right? If you were to ask me right now, that's, that's the two, the tandem where you go, um, hands down, best two guys play together. Great. They both can do multiple things. You can go to them in ISO situations. They'll score. Can, can Trey and DeJounte be that? No. The answer is no. No. So if you know the answer is no, right. John, then you have to make moves. This is where the retool comes in. You've got to change some things. Because if I look at the best backcourt in the NBA and I go, it's those guys. And if I look at my guys and go, my guys can't be that. At their best. Can they be that combo? If they can't, no, they can't though. But because Trey, then Young, I got to move on because Trey Young can never be that combo. Trey Young is never going to be. Well, remember when we said when is they got, Trey Young better than Jalen Brown right now? Trey Young is his own cat. I mean, is he better? Is I he mean, better, better than, than Jalen Brown? Moran? He's not better is than better Tatum. Than, is he better than Dame? I mean, he's a he's a really great player, and I love him. But he is not a two guard, two ball player. He's a ball centered guard. 
And so when we said, you know, one of the great things is, is that they, they can run, they can kind of run triangle here. They can split the uh, offense one side of the court, the other side of the court, uh, and have Trey come down and, and in certain possessions he'll pop out and play two and shoot threes and DeJounte will take control. They're not, no, that's not. That doesn't work in Trey's world. It doesn't work anywhere. Trey is a ball center first point guard. All right, so then you're telling me the only way we can win. It's Dukes and Bell Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. You need a spot up two is what you need. Correct. We're, we're talking about the Hawks. We just heard from Brian Geltziler yesterday who came on the show and said, look, I like, I like DeAndre Hunter, and the, and the contract's not bad. I think they stay the course. And, and the problem with that is I don't know if that gets you, Hawks fans, excited as we're watching these NBA playoffs to say we're going to run it back. <laughs> No, no, you're we're, not going to do that. We're, we're going to run it back. We're going to make sure. I mean, a full off season with Coach Quinn, you know, right. we're, we're going to run it back. That doesn't get me overly excited knowing the deficiencies of these teams or this team and the players on this team. Two new starters, at least, next year. You need shooters. Yeah, you need shooters. Why did I just do this? Uh, that's what <laughs> I just said. Why did I just a, do this? I, I did this like I'm you shooting. Pull! Oh! <laughs> exactly, like, exactly. You know, I mean, in a way, it's kind of what, uh, you know, I <laughs> – uh, you know, they were shooting for with Travis Schlank was, you know, their version of Golden State East. You know, you'd have Steph and you'd have you'd have Clay. Yeah. And but, th- th- you know, you kind of got a version of Steph, your own version, of, in a way, because they're logo three shooters when he's on. OK, so, right? so, okay, okay, so, so can so our backcourt be that? If you can find Clay, but that ain't DeJounte's game. He's not a spot up three guy. You need that spot up three guy, not from your number three and not off your bench. I think this team missed Kevin Herter far more than they oh, would ever absolutely. admit. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Totally agree with you, John. Totally agree with you. And and, and the, the, that was a cost-cutting move. Right. It wasn't he's not good enough or his potential and his upside won't be good in three years. This was simply, eh, can't keep everybody unless we let this guy go, so we're going to trade him. Mm-hmm. Terrible move. Yep. That was a 40% three-point shooter this year for the Sacramento Kings. Now, I get it. Some people say, well, you didn't do anything in the playoffs. Well, a lot of guys don't do anything in the playoffs. The point is they don't get there without Kevin Herter. Hell, we don't beat the Sixers two years ago without Kevin Herter's right, so look around, game right, six. Look around the league. You start to identify guys. You know, somebody said OG Ananobi. No, 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 no. I mean, I like OG, but no. You need Buddy Heald. Shooter. Yeah, that's who you need. You need Buddy Heald here. We need a guy because I want both two and three to be spot up threes. Because Trey will handle the rest. If you put the ball in Trey's hands and say, look, your job is to break the defense down, okay? Yeah. And, and distribute. By the way, one of the best distributors of the basketball in the NBA. Record number of assists shatters records. People don't give him enough credit. Oh, Trey just shoots all the time. What, do you, what game do you want? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, he, he <laughs> I mean, shares the ball. No he doubt. shares the ball in incredible ways. You know, he's a magician out there. So let him do his thing. You know, let him have that star center stage. Let him be the quarterback. Let him be the point guard. And then put the people around him. So you need somebody that can bang and be a big and get some rebounds. And, you know, you just can't uh, rely on Capella. And you need another shooter. You need two new starters. And your two and your three have got to be able to shoot threes. Because you want to be able to split the court with one on one side and one on the other. One in the corner, one in the elbow. Whatever you're doing. And let Trey decide on any given play which way he's going to try and attack you. John Fricky says it's the only way we're going to be able to win with Trey. Because he needs the ball in yep. his hands. Okay. I don't necessarily disagree with him. And a guy just hit me up. Dukes, you're not going to put Steph and Clay in that combo. I'm not putting the best shooting backcourt in the history of the NBA and try to compare them to what we have. No. it's That's unrealistic for me to even bring them up. I'm not going to do it. They're the best shooting backcourt in the history of the NBA. Four titles in eight years. And it might be five and nine if they win this year. I'm not bringing those two in to say, well, can our backcourt be that? That's why I asked John. Well, you know what else I'd do? I'd start bogey. Off the, not, not coming off the bench. Nope. I'd start him. Well, you need those points. See, that's the way but we're that's built a, right that's now. That's the three that can shoot. But, but you, that's, you don't have to trade for it. You got it. But that's how we're built. We're built, though. The problem, John, with that is, again, you're not getting – there were nights we didn't get anything from the bench. I understand that. Oh, it doesn't mean you don't have to re, retool the bench. You do. This is where you're going to go out and make that run at well, one year, one year expiring. Go get four one year expiring contracts. <laughs> All right, Terry Fontenot. <laughs> exactly. Go, go go get those one year deals. Right. Yeah. Except except you have a quarterback. Yeah. Let's... Except you have a quarterback. Uh, real quick. What about AJ? What about AJ Griffin? He went from like, hey, promising to like, I don't even see this guy. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, that's Quinn Snyder. But he's looking at him going, eh. his defense was like, hoo, 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 no good. Yeah. yeah, no good. No good on the defensive end. Yeah, no, no bueno. I mean, if you want to keep him on the team, that's fine. I mean, the biggest addition to this team was Sadiq Bay. 
I mean, he he changed the dynamic. That's the kind of guy you need. Mm. You need to go out and get a buddy healed. You need to get a big, and you need a couple more Sadiq Bays. Okay, now I'm talking. Yeah, and I'm with you. I think Sadiq Bay's going to be good for us. We're talking about the Hawks, guys. It starts for me with DeAndre Hunter. You have to make the decision of he's going to go or Collins is going to go. How about both? And if both go, then Bye-bye. that's fine. But some one of those two, and if you'd ask me right now, I'd, I'd still say Hunter. Fourth overall pick in the draft? Yeah. He gives you nothing. Right. Uh, wasn't he supposed to be this defensive whiz coming out of Virginia? Remember? Of course. He was the greatest defensive guy. Okay. I haven't really so much seen that.